It's the best rise of 2023. So for tonight, it's Rye Night. It's Rye Night. It is Rye Night, <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I don't know if you can tell by our, this yeah, is the Rye or Die shirt. Rye or Die. We dressed um, up. And thanks for joining us. Uh, if you're wondering why this video is a little bit later than normal, it's because Sarah got COVID and lost her sense of smell and taste for right after the new year. several weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, but here we are. And let us just uh, explain real quickly how we got to where we got to. There are chapter marks down here. So if you are new to the channel, we suggest that you watch this part so you can understand it. Probably answer a lot of the questions you may have. If you're a regular here and you're like, I've heard all this, that's why we got the chapter marks in there. So you can just go ahead and skip around to number 10. We'll see you over there. So first things first, Chad, I think we should make clear this is what we consider to be the best of the best rye that we tasted in 2023. No this, exceptions. No exceptions. And we did these blind. We mm -hmm. ranked them blind. So we couldn't include price and availability as factors. Correct. So here's how it worked. Throughout the year 2023, we kind of set aside some uh, ones that we earmarked as mm -hmm. these should go into the blind best of the year contention. Very tasty. Towards the end of the year, we poured all those into two ounce sample bottles. We marked on the bottom of the bottle what the whiskey was. We mixed them all up and then grabbed one at random. The first bottle that we grabbed, we then put a sticker on the front of the sample bottle that said A and so on and so forth. And then we scored them from there. We scored them from there. Now we did include three staple mm -hmm. ryes in this, uh, in the mix. It was Pikesville rye, rare breed rye, and Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof rye. So we'll see how those compare to maybe some of these fancier releases. That's right, because what we included had to be denoted in some way or another as being a 2023 release. Those three staples that we just talked about do not have a way to denote them mm -hmm. as a, you know, a yearly release. Although the Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof rye did come to us as a media sample from the distillery in 2023 so but things that we tasted in 2023 <laughs> but not necessarily 2023 releases exactly so throughout the month of december and then spilling into january and a little bit of february because of uh, because of some me. uh illness we would sit down with that uh, two ounce sample bottle of whiskey we'd get out our notebook and we would score them out of 100 points possible Four categories, meaning 25 points each, those categories being nose, palate, mouthfeel, and finish. Once we got them all scored, then we revealed to ourselves what these were, mm -hmm. and we had our top 10. Right, after we averaged our scores. Averaged our scores, that's an important part, <laughs> point too, so yeah. yeah, we averaged the scores. And that gave us our top 10, which, you know, we were scoring them individually across a long amount of time. So you never know how you were feeling on any different day. Uh, so that's why we do what we call our double check. So we took our top 10, we poured them blind into fl a flight so that we could experience what we call the flight fight effect. Exactly. And see how things stack up when they're tasted next to each other. Mm -hmm. Now, when we do that, we did reorder a bit. Again, these were all blind, so yep. by taste, in comparison, we did shuffle things around a bit. Yeah, just take a look at uh, this right here and you can see on screen how things are listed uh, just by their score and we included the scores there for you. And now watch how they shuffle around when we do our double check. You know, you're looking at what was ranked number four uh, as score went all the way up to number one. We had others that just stayed at the same place. We had others, I think one of our biggest drops was a number five score went down to number 10 in the Oof. double check. So things like that. That did happen, um, but it, it, it's kind of like you are tasting them back to back, not in a in a vacuum, mm -hmm. and then you can kind of see what flaws or positive notes kind of jump more to the forefront when you are tasting them uh, together. All right, so that's how it works. Uh, that's mm -hmm. how we got to where we are, and now we're going to reveal to you what our favorite ones are. We'll do yes. the countdown. We'll do the countdown, starting with uh, 15 through 11 as honorable mentions. Coming in at number 15, Michter's Toasted Barrel Rye. Number 14 saw Pursuit United Rye. At number 13, we have Four Gate Split Stave. At number 12 was Whiskey Gypsy, The Journey, Volume 1. And one of our staples coming in at number 11 with Rare Breed Rye. All right, so those were some of the close calls. Now let's go ahead and get into it with number 10. High and Wicked Rye. Now this is a new one to us this year. We had not had this before. Correct. 98.2 uh, proof. Mm -hmm. It's a 91.9 rye, which yeah. is also different. 91% uh, rye, 9% malted barley. Right, yeah. and made by New Riff. And we do love their yeah. their mash bill. Yeah, absolutely. 91.9 must be a contracted uh, mash bill because I don't know of any other New mm. Riff that's a, a 91.9. So yeah, the bottle here carries an age statement of five years. Yep, and it comes in at around $85. Yeah. 
At number nine, Michter's 10 year rye. One of the lower proof ones, this one's what, 92.8 proof. Mm -hmm. uh, Obviously 10 years old. You know, 10 years old. I do love this one a Yeah, lot. this is another, you know, we didn't say it on the last one, but obviously the last one is sourced, sourced from New Riff. This one also sourced undisclosed distillery or distilleries, but Kentucky distillery or mm -hmm. distilleries. A $200 MSRP. This is one of the, yeah. It's a little <laughs> steep for coming in at number nine, but I do like it a lot. Now on the secondary uh, can go for over $300. Yeah, starting at 300 actually, uh, depending on who's trying to sell mm -hmm. it to you. Uh, yes, yeah, so we recommend if you're getting this one to try to stay at that retail mark. I know it's out of some people's price range as it is. For sure. But uh, rather tasty, let's do a little tasty notes. Um, I said on the nose, uh, sweet vanilla, floral, baked goods, and caramel. And then on the palate, I said lots of sugary sweetness, mm. lemon cake, fluffy citrus. And then I don't know what, what I said there. Looking fulling. Lemon Makes sense, yeah. put that up on put, screen. Put that on your label. Uh, lemon pepper seasoning, bright, and uh, oh, I said it lacks a little bit of bottom end. That's probably just because of the slightly think, lower yeah, proof. The lower yeah, the lower proof. Um, on the nose, I said it was effervescent, clean, and airy with mint notes, and then that carried through to the palate where I said peppermint candy, crisp, clean, herbal, slightly, and mm. delicate. And then I said a medium long finish, which I thought I had, and I think that's that 10 year coming through. It's gentle and delicate because of the proof, but the age gives it that, you know, has also those notes, those rye notes carrying through. Absolutely. At number eight, Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof Rye. This is our only staple to make into the top 10. We'll just go ahead and uh, spoil that for you. So oh, this yeah. made it the highest of those three staples that we put in there to kind of keep everybody in, in check as it is. Sure, and the age on this one's gonna vary. Runs about six to seven and a half years. Yeah, not necessarily, um, yeah. About $60 though. So again, you have that number yeah. eight coming in when we did the, the double check. I, I think it's the proof for us, you know, with the difference between the, the Michter's 10 and mm -hmm. the Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof. <laughs> But that's a huge difference in terms of $60 to $200, so. Very, and we've been starting to see them kind of pop up a little bit more in our mm -hmm. uh, market. I know uh, like our friends down in Georgia say they're, they're everywhere. Maybe people are just finally getting their fill of them and they're leaving some on the shelf. So it's Who good knows? to see them becoming more readily available. Absolutely, and I do think area. I do think this is one of the best values that's on this list. Mm, yes, for sure, If as long as you're getting it for that $60 Correct. MSRP. At number seven, Michter's Barrel Strength Rye. Barrel Strength, but it is Michter's. They go in the barrel at 103, mm -hmm. so it is lower. This one's 109.6 proof. Obviously, we've been enjoying it. Yes, <laughs> uh, non-age stated. Right. But, you know, unlike the Michter's 10, mm -hmm. but it does have a, has it on the proof, right? Which we do enjoy. Less expensive, 120 dollars SRP. <laughs> you're so, saying less expensive, and you're still saying 120. But less expensive it. than then the, the Michter's 10. Yes. 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 Absolutely. Uh, on the nose, I got some like orange and peach notes with a light baking spice and that gentle toasted oak that I think is pretty signature when it comes to Michter's products, for me anyways. Yeah, almost marshmallowy. Uh, on the palate, those same notes came through with like a mellow orange and peach. Uh, again, the baking spice, kind of like a peach cobbler. And that came through too on the finish with that spice yeah. lingering and the peach. Overall, you know, I, I was pretty pleased with it. At number six, Pride of Anderson County Rye. Now we don't have a bottle of this one. Imagine it right here. Uh, we did get it to taste it as like, you know, a sharing with friends yes. type of thing. Yes. Um, but it is a $400 bottle and we do not have one of those. $400 MSRP. Now, you know, some of these I did try to see if I could find sort of what the secondary, although we're not very plugged into the secondary market, but just no. kind of a Google to see what sites were selling it for. Didn't see this one up here at all. Interesting. Um, it was pretty limited. 116.8 proof, mm. about nine years old. Yeah, a little Come, over the nine, yeah. Coming in at number six, well, it was very tasty. I'm very pleased. You know, the top 10 is going to be the best of the best, but sure. at $400, I would hope <laughs> that it would be in the best of the best. So if you guys don't know uh, about this one, it is wild turkey um, sourced, and that's on the label. Uh, let's do a few tasty notes for the nose. I said spice, clover, and cinnamon, a little lemon. And then on the palate, I said clove, lemon and honey, uh, slight savory, and pepper. Yeah, this one was really interesting to me with the spice. I kept getting like a almost like a chili pepper spice. Spice. Nope. So clove, baking spice like normal, but then a chili pepper spice coming in with some lemon and berry, both on the palate uh, and the nose. Mm -hmm. And a little more minty and lemony on the palate, that spice and heat carrying through with the berry and the oak on the finish. Okay. I thought it was pretty tasty. 
All right, before we get into the top five, you know we want to hit pause and tell you about our home on the internet. It's whiskeyambitions.com. It's where you can get this rye or die. It's uh, this logo with rye or die much bigger on the back. Sarah, your rye whiskey uh, sweater right there. Also, the Cut Crystal Glen Cairns that we're drinking for on this very special episode, but also all of our hats, hoodies, all of our glassware, bottle cut candles, elemental cocktail elixir syrup, and more always coming soon at whiskeyambitions.com. And you can become a patron at patreon.com slash it's bourbon night and join our community for as little as one buck a month. That is where we release after the episode exclusives, discounts on that merch, our barrel picks, including the Sagamore Rye, which is still available. We had a huge uh, yield from yield. that one, and so <laughs> it made it outside of Patreon. You can find that on our website right now. Uh, and lots more going on there. All right, we'll be right back. At number five, Sazerac 18 year rye. Another one that's not here. <laughs> uh, we don't have, we had media sample of this one. Yeah. Something important to note on this one, this one took a tumble in the double check. It did, it's not super surprising because in a vacuum when you're just, you know, scoring it, yeah, yeah, it's 18 years old, it's got that beautiful oak. Right. Uh, you don't it's have delicate. anything uh, proof wise to kind of compare it to. I mean, obviously you can tell that it's a lower proof, but uh, it's not like you have any others that are higher mm. that you're drinking mm -hmm. along with it. So when you do that double check, and it's sort of like that flight fight effect we're talking about, I mean, yeah, I can see how it can right. kind of I mean, slip. I, I do think it's really delicate and balanced and a well-composed product. Mm -hmm. However, as you just said, side by side, I wouldn't say it had faults, but I think our taste profile yeah. you know, kind of shifted it around a little bit. But mm -hmm. I think coming in at number five is still a feat for it. Yeah, uh, 90 I would proof. Say so. MSRP $125, but we all know we're not gonna see BTAC at MSRP, are we? Some notes, um, I said on the nose, figs, raisins, cherries, which again, Buffalo Trace, pretty yep. uh, standard. Baking spices, orange zest, and pecans. Palette, pretty much the same notes coming through. Like delicate, layered, enjoyable. Mango sorbet. Mango um, sorbet. <laughs> with a medium finish and a building spice and those lingering fruit notes. Okay, so I said on the nose, I got uh, apple peel and raisins, really good. Great note, Chad. Uh, ripe fruit and slight oak. And then on the palate, I said, wow, peach slash plum, apricot, almost pina colada, lemon, and cool whip. At number four, Parker's Heritage 10 Year Rye. Now this is one that took a little upswing. Yeah, it, um, it got bumped up. Yeah, well, I know a couple spots. When we were doing the the blind double check, I almost called it the discount double check. No, that's not right. You were really happy with that one, really pleased because of the level of oak and the nuttiness that was coming <laughs> through for it. Yes. Which you know, in our minds, if it's that nutty, it's either Jim Beam or Heaven Hill. Usually, most likely. I wasn't trying um, to think of that. I just like a nutty profile. I think for ten years old, this reads older because of the level of oak that it's pulled. Level oak, yeah, the proof uh, probably is going to that as well. 128.8 um, proof, wow. 185 for the retail, now 550 is where it's gonna usually start on secondary, according <laughs> to Google. One of our fewer barely legal rides, it's a 51% rye, 35% mm. corn, and then that 14% uh, malted barley. But let's mm. do some, let's do a few tasty notes. I said rich, buttery, floral, honey, Peanuts, mm. that makes sense. And then on the palate, I said nuts, buttery, savory, and rich. Didn't have a whole lot to say about this one, but I, I did enjoy. On the nose, I said candy pecan, so that's that nuttiness coming in with oak and pepper. On the palate, again, that candied pecan coming through with pepper, grape, oak, and baking spice, and a long, warm finish with that lingering grape berry nutty <laughs> yeah, thing going on. Yeah. Delightful. Delightful. At number three, Thomas H. Handy. Which it's not 90 proof. It's uh, it is 124.9 proof. <laughs> also $125 MSRP, laugh, 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 laugh. Right, exactly. Now I will say this is the reason why I'm okay with the SAS 18 kind of slipping down in the double check is because when we did the BTAC review tasting, we did put the Handy over the SAS 18 That's true, we did. in that tasting. And then mm -hmm. when we tasted them side by side again here, we did it again. Yeah, so, so it's more consistent with how we actually feel about them, but they're both really quality products. I mean, no one's gonna argue. Right, yeah. So in a vacuum, the SAS 18 is very exceptional, but mm -hmm. it, it has a hard time holding up when you're drinking it amongst the other BTACs or other ryes. Sure. Uh, lower secondary price on this one of $600. Oh, wow. Uh, it's a six year and two month 
And uh, let's just do some quick uh, tasting notes for the nose. I said baked goods, brown sugar. Then for the palate, I said cola vibes, oak, pine, fresh, and root beer, question mark. On the nose, I said spiced berry and cherry with a hint of tobacco. On the palate, I said, whoa, lots of flavor, rich berry, spice, syrup, very intense with a good mouthfeel and festive. Festive. <laughs> Which you get with rice sometimes. It's festive. A long finish with the berry and spice notes lingering and a hint of oak. Okay. At number two, New Riff, high note, eight year, 100% malted rye. $69.99 MSRP. Coming in at number two. I mean, I love, love to it. see it. Love to see it. The only thing I would love more is if we had a full bottle. Ah, uh, that's okay. Uh, meaty sample, that's fine. Um, these are pretty limited. I know they were mm -hmm. in their, uh, like their, their club. Their, I their forget, club forget releases. What it's called. Mm -hmm. And then in limited supply. And that's as much information as we got. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of hate that such a limited one is coming in at number two. But as we said before, we don't put that or price into it. We want to know what was the best of the best. Well, and I think what's interesting too is that we've had two products from New Riff come in the top 10. We had the High and Wicked, oh, yeah. which is New Riff Source, come in at number 10. And then this one come in at number two. New Riff knows which rye. I think, yeah, I think when it comes to rise, you should keep an eye on New Riff. Maybe you can't mm -hmm. get this exact one, but perhaps you should keep an eye on their, especially their older stuff, at this being an eight year. Yes. You know, maybe we'll keep an eye as from more here. of those come out. See how they do in 18 years. Right? In 10 uh, years. 180 <laughs> 18.2 proof. Uh -huh. Shall we do some notes? I said on the nose, orange zest, cedar with a chewy caramel and ginger. I did love that ginger note as part of that rye. It was nice spice. Mm. Um, with the same notes coming through on the palate, zesty, a great texture, delicate spice, vanilla, and more ginger. And the finish, again, that orange zest, vanilla, ginger, and cedar all mm. coming through with a medium long finish. Just really delicate and pleasant. I liked nice. it a lot. I like it. You know, what I love about it is, it, yeah, it is it is limited, but... It's affordable. It's affordable, and I feel like New Riff, most of their stocks they're keeping for around that four to five year that's gonna go into their uh, bottle and bond. I'm hoping with like the acclaim that these are getting, they're going to be like, okay, we need to set more, mm, uh, more, more aside, aside for eight years or around that. Uh, I know they also have some six year age stated stuff, and hopefully, uh, expand popularity and then this won't be so limited and we'll, we can all enjoy it. We can all enjoy it. Definitely one to keep an eye on. Yeah. That means there's only one left. Who got the top spot? And it happens to be a finished rye. So you can take that as it could be our number one finished rye of the year. If you don't care that it's finished, it's just our number it's one rye number of the rye. year, however you want to take it. But here we go. At number one, Pursuit United, the Oak Collection, finished with Sherry French Revere Oak. And this is what we've been drinking uh, on this episode. I just love that Sherry bear, like that Sherry French Oak with the rye. I love a good finished rye. And mm -hmm. I, we've learned that from our Four Gate stuff, just in general. Uh, I love a Midwinter's Night Dram, which again, a finished rye. Mm -hmm. I just think it works really well. Yeah. And it really proved itself here. The guys at Pursuit United really know what they're doing. Uh, I think they're, obviously, because we, <laughs> in a blind tasting, moved it up, all the way up. Uh, don't give them too much credit. We know them, and we don't want them to get big heads. <gasps> oh, come uh, no. on. <laughs> no, that's fair. OK, no, fine. They great. do OK. Uh, 108 proof, $75 MSRP. Uh, there were 1,800 bottles um, of this release. So a little bit on the lower side, but hopefully, as they are growing as a brand, they're gonna start releasing more of this because mm -hmm. I know the wood finishing, or I'm sorry, the uh, Oak Collection, <laughs> I almost slipped into makers there. Uh, the Oak Collection been very popular for mm -hmm. them. I would love to see them do more of this. And I think for $75, it's definitely one that you should keep an eye out for as they continue to grow and put out more products. Yeah, and this is batch 11CC. It is a combination of two mash bills from Sagamore Spirits and uh, one match bill from a Barstown Bourbon Company. Okay. Yeah, so a Kentucky and Maryland uh, collaboration where the sum is greater than the parts, you know, that whole, As that they whole say. thing. On the nose on this one, I said carrot cake, which I love. <laughs> uh, spiced apples, berries, which I think is that sherry finish. On the palate, I said honey, carrot cake, green apples, baking spices, and a gentle building heat with a silky texture. Okay. And a nice medium long finish. It just really settles in. Sure. I mean, I'm tasting it right now and I'm very happy with it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for the nose, I said savory, honey, syrup, and cherries. On the palate, I said rich, dark, and earthy, pine, cherries, 
and a slight winter mint. Mm. Yeah. Really enjoyable, really glad to see uh, one, an up and coming and also two, a more available. Uh, you're not really seeing this going on the secondary. Although, right. although now, sir, I, I don't oh, know, I'm just kidding. stop. Just kidding. Uh, so that's that's good to see. Yeah. And uh, yeah, our, our best uh, rye slash finished rye of the year. I'm so proud of them. Yeah. They should be proud. They should be proud of them. Go tell them they did a good job. If you know <laughs> Kenny and Ryan, uh, let them know that they're doing great. There you go. Well, folks, that will put this one in the books. 2023 books. We've already started on setting things aside for 2024. It's a never ending cycle, but mm -hmm. we love it. Yeah. Um, hey, if you haven't subscribed to us already, you can do so by clicking right up here. There's suggestions of other videos down here, and we hope to see you over there in one of those. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Chad. Okay. Until next year, <laughs> drink more, right?